Hey there, good to see you. Today we're going to take a look at a new collection of D-Log2 Rec. 709 LUTs that I recently created for the DJI Air 2S drone. This LUT collection includes nine D-Log2 Rec. 709 transforms, including uh, just one basic transform, just a basic D-Log2 Rec. 709 LUT that you can use in order to get uh, a good solid baseline for your color grade. And then there are eight additional LUTs that do the same thing, but they also add a little extra flavoring, a little extra style, a little, uh, a little more character. Each one has been uh, intentionally created for different, uh, different environments, different moods, different feels. Some are a little bit cool, some are a little bit warm, appropriate for different times and situations, but all of them have been created from uh, landscape photography trips that I've been on over the past couple of years to places like Iceland, the American uh, West, the uh, Pacific Northwest, places where I flew the Air 2S quite a bit and captured uh, a lot of footage for videos that you see here on my YouTube channel. And these color grades are grades that I created for, uh, for my own footage and I've packaged them all together in one collection for uh, you to purchase and download if you own an Air 2S and you're looking for some uh, for some D-Log to Rec. 709 transforms that you can use to quickly color grade your footage and to get different looks uh, with minimal effort. So for the remainder of this video, we're going to jump into Adobe Premiere Pro and uh, DaVinci Resolve, and I'm going to demonstrate for you how to most effectively use these LUTs as part of your color grading workflow in both applications. Now, if you happen to be a Final Cut user, I apologize, I'm not a Final Cut user, so I'm not going to be demonstrating Final Cut here, but do know that these are uh, 3D LUTs in the .cube file format, so they are compatible with Final Cut. But for the purposes of this video here, we're going to use DaVinci and Premiere. And for that matter, I mean, some of the things that I talk about here when using these applications will be applicable to uh, Final Cut and to your workflow there as well. Pretty similar, you're just not going to see Final Cut in this video. Okay, without further ado, let's jump in. So here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro and I've already installed my DJI Air 2S D-Log Direct 709 Landscape LUTs to Premiere's uh, Creative Look drop-down menu here. Now, as you may know, if you are an Adobe Premiere Pro user, there are three main ways of applying LUTs. You may either just browse your local hard drive and, and select a LUT and apply that to your footage, or you may install those lookup tables, those custom lookup tables to Premiere to the application support directory that it uses so that then those custom LUTs are available in the drop-down menus every time you create a new project. Now, if you choose to install these LUTs, in Premiere, you have a choice between a technical directory and a creative directory. And there's a subtle but important difference between the two. LUTs that are installed to that technical directory, those appear up here in the basic correction section uh, inside of this input LUT drop-down menu here. Whereas the LUTs that are added to the creative directory, they appear here in the creative look drop-down menu. Now the LUTs will function the same from either directory. They will transform your D-Log footage to the Rec. 709 color space. But the order of operations is different. If the LUTs are applied from the technical directory, from that input LUT drop-down up there at the top, then the D-Log Direct 709 transform happens first. It is, you know, the first thing that is done. And then all edits from that point forward, all, you know, any additional color grading changes that you make happen thereafter. Whereas LUTs that are applied using the creative directory, that log to Rec. 709 conversion happens a little bit later. So that then you have the opportunity through that basic correction uh, panel in Lumetri to go in and make changes to exposure, to contrast, to fix the black point, to fix the white point. And that's important because sometimes, especially with footage that has been underexposed or overexposed, when log is transformed into Rec. 709, sometimes data can get clipped. Uh, like you can get, you know, like dead black pixels and dead white pixels, uh, you know, pure white pixels and pure black pixels in your footage when log is converted to Rec. 709. So it's important to balance exposure and to fix the black point and the white point upstream from that log to Rec. 709 conversion. And that's why I recommend using these LUTs from the creative dropdown so that it's a little bit easier to go in and, and to be making those changes. So the footage you're looking at here, this was captured in the D-Log color profile on the DJI Air 2S. And that's why uh, that's why it looks rather, rather flat and gray, but obviously we're going to be fixing that in just a moment. Now, in case you're curious to know, you know what this is that you're looking at, this is 
a geothermal area up in northern Iceland that I visited last summer and I just absolutely lucked out with this you know golden hour light at the end of the day and the reason you see this this smoke this vapor you know that's just kind of lingering in the air here is because this is a geothermal uh, mountain range here and you know in all these cracks and these areas in between these hills there's just you know smoke and vapor that's just pouring out uh, all over the place and it um, has a very distinct smell to it <laughs> let's put it that way okay so let's transform this d-log footage to rec 709 and to do that we're going to use the golden LUT from the dji air 2s landscape collection and as you can see it's a you know it's a pretty dramatic change quite a bit of uh, warmth has been injected into the highlights in order to really accentuate those golden hour tones some warmer oranges and reds and yellows there and just overall it just has a very warm kind of look to it which really adds some additional volume especially for footage like this captured at golden hour so now would be a good time to make any necessary changes to the log footage prior to the rec 709 conversion and to do that i'm going to come up here and let's take a look at our scopes and see what's going on with the footage now looks like there's a little bit of bunching up going on down here at the bottom of the signal it's not quite clipping but it's a little close for comfort. So what we can do then is come over here to the basic correction area of the Lumetri color effect. And because we apply that LUT through the creative look drop down here, we can now use the black slider and we can lift the blacks just a little bit. And now you can see in the waveform that it's looking a little cleaner. It's looking a little less bunchy down here at the and clumpy down here. And we're able to do this because you know, this change is being applied to the log footage, the D-log footage before the Rec. 709 transform. Another good thing to check for is color cast in the footage. And one way that I like to do that, let me just turn off the LUT here for a second. And I'm going to crank up the saturation, which looks pretty awful. Uh, you know, basically so that we can see what's going on with our color. So I'm going to bring up the vector scope here and just see where the tones are landing on the vector scope here. And we can see that it's leaning like a little it's a little off center like it's a little towards magenta is a little bit of magenta in the footage here we can fix that and address that by using the the tint and the temperature sliders over here i'm just going to push this uh, a little towards green and then just keep an eye on what's happening with our scope here let's just park it right there and i'm going to reset the saturation bring that back down and now the image is a little more neutral going to turn the LUT back on and now the image may actually <laughs> be a little a little too green uh, let me just pull that temperature slider back add a little more magenta and yeah now I think now we're in the right ballpark now it's definitely looking much better okay now let's take a look at DaVinci Resolve now in case you're curious to know I personally prefer color grading footage using DaVinci Resolve because the tools are more uh, sophisticated, more nuanced. It's just a more powerful piece of software, especially when it comes to color grading. I still use Premiere for editing because I'm just so accustomed to, you know, the keyboard shortcuts and, and you know, how it works. And I just prefer editing footage using that. But when it comes to color grading, it's yeah, DaVinci is, you know, kind of in a league of its own. It's really worth if you're into video, which I assume you are by you know, because you're watching this video, it's really worth downloading and giving it a try. And by the way, it's free, which is incredible. DaVinci Resolve is actually free and it's loaded with features, the free version. And there is a paid version, a studio version, which I do have uh, that costs, I think, about like 300 bucks, something like that. That has some additional effects and some additional functionality in it. But for the average person, like the free version of DaVinci is is pretty amazing so let's uh let's jump in here and do uh let's color grade this footage using davinci resolve okay same footage from before you saw in premiere just a second ago but let's begin by opening up our project settings and taking a look at color management because this is an important consideration whenever you're doing any kind of uh, log to rec 709 transform so right now i have davinci wire gb as my color science and rec 709 gamma 2.4 as my timeline color space which means this project is a non-color managed project i am intentionally not using davinci's uh color management here because if color management were enabled, DaVinci would look at that drone footage from the Air 2S and say, oh, hey, we have a, a DJI drone here. And it would uh, transform that D-log footage into 
uh, into the the color science of Da Vinci and the profiles that it uses I, uh, for DJI, I think are a little outdated or maybe they were made for different drones. Anyway, you can you can get pretty weird results uh, when it comes to color. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that for you here in just a second. So to keep things simple and easy, I just use Da Vinci YRGB Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. And then I know that Da Vinci's not getting in the way. I can apply my own Rec 709 LUT to the D-Log footage and you know, everything's going to be good. But obviously there are probably going to be projects that you're working on. Maybe you're working on one right now where you have drone footage mixed in with other footage and you are working in a color managed uh, project. So let me show you what you need to do in that setup. OK, so if your project is color managed, you probably have DaVinci YRGB color managed up here. And then you probably have HDR DaVinci wide gamut intermediate as your color processing mode so that you're working in the in the largest possible uh, color space in DaVinci. Let's click Save. And it may not look like much has changed with our log footage, but actually a pretty big change occurred. So let's come over here to the serial node. I'm going to apply one of the LUTs from the collection. Let's do golden like before. And look at what happens. And, <laughs> and so now it's very kind of green and yellowy and it just yeah it just does not look right at all and this is because we have color management enabled in davinci and it's not interpreting the d-log uh, color profile correctly so what we can do here is come over here to the uh to the clip right click on the clip and then select bypass color management and as you can see, the footage looks much better because we are now bypassing color management for just that particular uh, clip. Now, if I added more drone footage to this project, I would need to right click on each one and bypass color management again in order to be turning that off. OK, so now we have our Rec. 709 transform and I'm going to let me just put a label on here so we know what it is. And typically, whenever you color grade in DaVinci, uh, you know, kind of like what I was talking about in Premiere just a second ago, you know, you kind of want to be making some edits upstream and maybe some edits after Rec. 709 too. So let me just uh, add some serial notes here. I'm going to put one uh, back here before, and I'm going to pop one out here in front. And, you know, basically when you have a serial node behind your Rec. 709 transform, this is where you're able to do what I did uh, in Premiere just a second ago. This is where you can correct things like, it's a good, you know, it's a good place to be correcting uh, color cast, to be fixing the black point and the white point, to be making any adjustments that you need to make to exposure, whatever else, uh, in order to better optimize that log footage for its conversion later into Rec. 709. And then this node that's after Rec. 709 here, that is for, you know, making some adjustments to color, uh, maybe using some of the primary uh, wheels in here, because those tools are designed for uh, and they function best with footage that is in the Rec. 709 color space. That's pretty much what they're intended for. So some of your color grade may be before and some of it uh, may come after. It all depends on your workflow and how you like to work. Now, I remember from Premiere that this footage does lean just a little bit towards magenta. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but if I wanted to fix that uh, in a... Uh, HDR wide gamut workflow like I'm currently in. I could use this global wheel here in the HDR uh, view, which I feel like works really well with log footage. So I'm just going to make just a very, very slight change here just to kind of bring it just a little bit away from magenta. Now, one thing I definitely should have done before in Premiere is raise the overall exposure of the image because I do feel like it's a little bit dim. See how the, how the, the whites are sitting a little bit low? So again, I'm going to come over here to the global wheel. I'm going to pull this up. And now you can see that the whole signal is being pulled up. And maybe maybe my highlights now are getting, you know, especially like right in here. I feel like they're getting a little bit bright. So let me bring the lights down. And now we're definitely getting some more detail back uh, in this region here. So this is where we currently are with the footage. And I feel like it's looking pretty good. Before wrapping up this video, there's one question that I assume that I'm probably going to to receive about these LUTs, and I just want to uh, just address it really quickly before uh, before closing out. And that is a question of, can you use these LUTs with other DJI drones besides the Air 2S? The answer is technically yes, you can, assuming, of course, those, those drones uh, support D-Log and you're able to shoot in D-Log on those drones, including like, you know, the Mavic 2 Zoom, the Mavic 2 Pro, um, the uh, obviously the Mavic 3, which just recently came out. But the thing to know about 
other DJI drones is that D-Log is not quite the same on every drone. It's kind of like Canon C-Log is a little bit different on different Canon cameras because they have different sensors in them. And the same is true for DJI drones. So these LUTs are, that I'm offering here are intentionally designed for the Air 2S, but they can be used with D-Log from other drones. You just may need to go in and you know, be making some adjustments to contrast, maybe exposure, some other things in order to get them looking right with D-Log uh, captured using those other drones. So for now, Air 2S, but um, perhaps there will be an opportunity to expand this to other drones in the future. So to learn more and perhaps uh, pick up these LUTs for yourself, there is a link down below in the video description you may use. And for about uh, a week after this video goes live on YouTube, there is also a special 25% off coupon code that you can also use as part of your uh, order in order to save a little bit of money as part of you know launching these LUTs and, and uh, pushing them out into the world. I'm uh, offering 25% off. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and contact me. You can uh, leave a comment below or you can reach out to me directly. My email address is down below in the video description. And you can also hit me up uh, over at Instagram too, if you'd like to. That's it, everyone. Thanks so much. Uh, hope you're having a great summer. I'll see you next time.